I'm Jack Harvard Taylor and I'm going to be bringing you all the action over the weekend. Kicking off with the sprint this morning, with the first run starting at 9.30 and the second run at 12.30. So just a quick recap in case you've just joined us. We've uh, moved over from France. We were previously in PLV, Prolongion, Le Vanoise and uh, Pralou. We're now here in Germany, in Obiok. You can see on your screen now the technical delegate today, Urban from Slovenia, also working very hard today with uh, his production team on site, doing an excellent job. But in just a few minutes' time, we'll be getting the racing underway with Guru Helde Schilset from Norway kicking off the ladies' race. Back in uh, Pralou in France, just... Um, just over a week ago, we saw Amelie Raymond take the win in the sprint, followed by Beatrice Zimmerman from Switzerland and Jasmine Taylor from Great Britain. Fortunately, Beatrice Zimmerman isn't racing here in Obiok at the moment. She had a horrible crash in, I think it was the parallel sprint, where she straddled one of the gates and um, had a rather, rather horrible crash. Um, giving herself a sort of a mild concussion. So she's not racing today, but Amelie Remel is back, having taken a year out. She had a daughter last March. She's now very much back into the swing of things on the circuit and currently the overall leader of the ladies' sprint. Jasmine Taylor from Great Britain, another top runner out there today. She's currently second overall and um, no doubt looking for another win here today. And Argeline Tambuke from France, currently overall third place, going in 10th bib number today. Following the ladies, we'll see the men go down and um, the overall leader, Bastian Dyer, will be um, getting things underway, followed by Phil Lau, the second overall, and Trim Locken from Norway, currently in third. But now on your screen, ladies and gentlemen, Guru Hilde Schelset from Norway. We saw her just at the top there. Very different scenes today in Obiok. Yesterday we had wonderful sunshine uh, and um, it's a little bit warmer today. It is uh, it's about zero degrees. It's blowing fairly hard at top. Not great visibility. You can see the cloud coming in a bit, but good to have the on your screen now from Norway getting this morning's racing underway. 
Guru currently sixth overall in the World Cup standings in the sprint. What's this lady going to produce today? And there we have it on course. Helge Schelset from Norway getting the racing underway here in Obiok, Germany. Oh, over in just the third gate. Guru Helge Schelset skiing out. She's hiking though. Good to see her going back up. Not a great start to the racing here for Guru Helge Schelset. Hiking back up for the blue gate. You see the blue flag going up there, picking up penalty points. It actually is going to be a little bit disappointed after that start. Elder Schelset never gone better than second on the World Cup before. Looking for a win. Certainly making the ladies' line there. A little bit of distance to spare. Skiing nicely in these lower gates, but it's got to knock your confidence having a fall early at the top. It's going to put her out of contention for the podium spot today. Hilda Schellset possibly just saving something in the tank for her second run. It's a quick reminder for those of you who aren't so familiar to Telemark. We'll see in the sprint today, the ladies go down a giant slalom section of the course. They'll be going over a jump where they have to reach a certain distance and then into a 360 before the skating section of the course at the bottom. Very how it, Guru Helde Schelset from Norway. Just having that crash there, we're seeing that replay getting slightly caught on the inside of a turn, just falling inside. Next up, though, bib number two, Martina Weiss from Switzerland. A real contender for today's sprint. Martina's taken a little bit of a time, a little bit of time out. She moved over from alpine skiing not so long ago. And this is her first Telemark World Cup of this season. I know she's been competing in free ride earlier on in the season, making good work of this course so far. Certainly bit of a wild card for me. I think she could be in with a good chance this weekend. Not a bad jump there from Martina. Looks like she made the jump line. Some smooth skiing, a lovely rhythmic course here today. I was doing a course inspection earlier with the athletes, just looking at the, the sequence and the rhythm of the gates. And it's a nice, nice, smooth, um, fairly regular course set by the German coach Fritz Troyer and his brother Tony, who put on a fantastic first course. But here we are, here we have Martina Weiss from Switzerland pushing hard for the line. No doubt going to take the lead after Guru Helde Schelset's fall in her first run. There we have it, and a good opening run. Interesting to see Martina Weiss skating what looks like very long alpine poles as opposed to skate poles, which is rather unusual. There we see her. Not a bad idea if it works. Next up, though, Berit Junger from Germany. Now, of course, the first of our German contenders. Plenty of support for the Germans here today. Berit, just her second season racing World Cup. Making nice work of this course here today. Berit Younger, one of the junior German skiers. No doubt looking to get a good couple of races under her belt before she moves on to Kvavit for the Junior World Championships just next week. Good run from the junior. Taking a nice line in the 360. Nice smooth in the skate section. Really important to try and carry as much speed as possible through some of the um, larger turns you can see in the 360 going into the skate section. You can carry as much speed as possible. You obviously save 
a little bit of time, not having to skate as much. Gained second place there, just five seconds off Martina Weiss, still leading the way for Switzerland. Next up, though, bib number four, Joanna Hultzmann from Germany. Joanna Holtzman, last year's overall World Cup winner. Currently running fifth in the sprint. Had a few issues this season, but no doubt looking to make amends. If anything, Joanna has got to be probably the fastest German skier on the hill today, certainly in the ladies' race. Very familiar with this terrain as well. Living about 25 minutes away from here in Obiok. So very familiar with the race hill. And a strong ski from Joanna Holtzman. Plenty of German support here going into the skating section, which is great to see for a local. Joanna Holtzman there taking a slightly different line going around that last yellow gate. We saw most of the racers go anti-clockwise, sorry, clockwise. She went anti-clockwise and it's obviously paid off. Almost a two second lead for Joanna Holtzman. Cracking jump there. Some beautiful skiing. Joanna Holtzman, a real technician of the telemark. Next up, though, bib number five from Great Britain, Jasmine Taylor. Now on course. Jasmine Taylor currently second overall in the sprint. She took her first wins last year in all four, all three disciplines, sorry. No doubt looking for a win here today. Had a great start to the season, number of podiums. Jasmine Taylor making nice work of this course here today. Looks like she flew past the ladies' jump line there, avoiding a four-second penalty, landing in telemark and making the line. Question is, ladies and gentlemen, does she have the skills to pay the bills? And at the moment, it's looking like she does, having a great run. Coming into the skating section now. Be interesting to see which way she goes round the next yellow control gate at the top. And exactly the same as Martina Weiss, currently in second position, going clockwise. Jasmine Taylor going for the line now, unfortunately, just a little bit behind Joanna Holtzman, putting her in third position. But a strong ski from Jasmine Taylor. You see the snow coming up behind the skis. It really is windy up there today. Such a contrast from yesterday. It was such beautiful sunshine, very little wind. Very respectable run from Jasmine Taylor. Next up though, our second German, sorry, third German contestant here today. Anna Katrina Kessler, now on course. Also Kessler's second season here in the World Cup. looking to show the local crowd exactly what she can do here today. Taking a quite direct line, we saw her just pushing the red gate out the way. I'm not quite sure whether she made the jump line, but straight back in the swing of things. It was fairly uh, conforming course here today, fairly regular rhythm, which is nice. There is a small short banana gate off the jump. Kessler make good work of this course, though. He certainly doesn't have the experience of some of the older racers here, the likes of Amelie Raymore or Joanna Holtzman, but that she makes up for in energy and enthusiasm. Kessler going for the line now, going into fourth position for the young German. Very respectable skiing. There we see her 
taking a very tight line, getting close to the gates. Johanna Holtzman on your screen now. Big thumbs up as the current leader. But if anyone's going to steal the glory today, it's going to be Amelie Remel. Next up in the gate, wearing the leader's bib. Amelie Remel with over 180 World Cup starts to her name, over 170 World Cup podiums. This lady is on fire this season, having come back from a year out, have her daughter back in March. Amelie Remel looking rock solid once again. There is no stopping this lady. Big jump there, almost making the men's line. Amelie Remor from Switzerland. Carving beautifully down the course, safely into 360 now. And a super strong skate from Amelie Remor, as you can see now. Amelie is really strong all-round athlete, does a lot of gymnastics in the summer, maintain her fitness. One of the most successful Fizz World Cup athletes. There we have it, going in the second position behind Joanna Holtzman, that's gonna hurt her, but a great confidence boost for the German. I have to say I wasn't expecting that from Amelie Remel, the current leader in the sprint. Big smile from Joanna Holtzman, the local girl. Next up though, Simone Urli, also from Switzerland, bib number eight, currently ninth overall in the sprint standings. Another real contender. We see the snow blowing up. It really is picking up at the top. Simone Urli on course. She took her first victory last season in Suicide Six in the USA in the sprint. One of her best disciplines. Textbook skiing here from a Swiss lady. She approaches a jump. Great skills from over jump, going around the banana gate there. Looks so posed, so in control over every movement. Simone Early safely out of the 360 in the skate section. Question is, can she do some damage today? Simone Early from Switzerland. I don't think she's quite got enough in the tank to take the lead over Holtzman. There we have it, going into sixth position, picking up. One gate penalty, but a fine run from the Swiss. Next up, bib number nine, Katrin Reichmann from Germany. Another serious contender. Reichmann took a bronze and two gold medals as a junior. Junior World Championships. So well versed in telemark racing. Looking very smooth around these top gates, possibly taking a slightly more rounded turn than some of the previous athletes have gone down the course already. Big jump there from Reichman. Certainly making the line. You can see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, ladies and gentlemen, you have the little box with the penalty points and the time. On the left, you have the penalties for the gates, so you pick up a one second penalty for not skiing around the gates in the telemark position, and four second penalty for not making the jump line, and one sec sorry, three second penalty for not making the jump line, additional second for not landing the telemark, as we see Reichman has picked up one second penalty there. Strong skate, though. Coming over the line into seventh position for Katrin Reichmann. Yeah. 
Next up, build number 10 from France, Argeline Tambouke. Tambouke currently third overall in the sprint, standing so far. Again, a real contender here today in Obiok, Germany. Oh, just getting caught up over the front ski there, putting her late into these next gates, but great recovery from Tambuke. Hopefully it hasn't damaged her time too much. Taking a super aggressive line, getting really low, smashing the gates out of the way now. Huge jump from Ajeline Tambuke. Looks like she made the, almost the men's line there. Ajeline, the real fighter. Never giving up, always going hard. From Samoa in France. Took four victories last season. Already had much success already. Certainly in the last of the French races, taking a number of podium positions. What can she do? Ski into sick position. No doubt frustrated by that mistake at the top of the course with a fine run from Angeline Tambuke anyway. Just coming out of into the soft snow there. Great recovery though. Managed to, managed to whip the skis around, getting straight back into the course. It's good to see the athletes at the bottom giving each other a bit of a hug, congratulating one another. Next up from Germany, bib number 11, Antonia Knella. Now on course. Antonia's second World Cup season racing. Making some real waves in the World Cup. Currently running in 18th overall in the sprint standings. We've had a fantastic 10th position in Pralu just over a week ago in France. No doubt looking to better that today. Possibly a top 10 would be nice, no doubt. Certainly on home soil. Slightly timid over that jump, though. I'm not quite sure whether she made the line. Nice skiing, though, in the bottom section of the course. Carrying plenty of speed out of the 360 as she goes into skate section now. And Tony Nella from Germany. Again, interesting tactic like Joanna Holtzman going anti-clockwise around that top yellow control gate. Obviously heard on the radio, that's the way to go. There we go, cruising into a provisional 10th position for Antonia, very respectable as well. Joanna Holtzman in the bottom, looking very pleased in the winner's chair. Next up though, bib number 12, Masha Strakil from Slovenia. Now on course, currently 14th overall in the sprint standings. No doubt looking to better that today, picking up more World Cup points, moving her higher up the start order. Masha's second World Cup season, race in Telemark. We can see just a bit more snow coming down the course now. Things pick up a little bit. It's still incredibly windy at the start. Masha Strakel making good work of this course safely into the 360 now. Well into the skate. She's got a little bit of work to do, though, to catch up the other girls. We see her picking up four seconds on the jump. Three for not making the line, and one for not landing in the telemark position. But a very respectable performance from the young Slovenian. There we have it, skiing in 10th position for Masha Srakil. Next up, though, bib number 13, Madalina Kopeka from the Czech Republic. 
Madalena, again one of the newer girls to the World Cup. Out here with Andre Heger, also from the Czech Republic, who's made a return to Telemark after a knee operation not so long ago. It's great to see some Czech skiers out here, though, in Germany. We didn't see so many of the Czech team at the start of the season. Oh, just a bit of a mistake there off the jump, putting the right foot forward instead of the left foot, possibly not having a, a proper look during the inspection, but a good recovery certainly after the jump. And now well into the skate section for Magdalena Kapeka. Just 19 years of old, years of age even. Magdalena possibly tiring a little bit as she comes towards the finish now. There we have it, 12th position for the Czech skier Magdalena Kapeka. Now, though, our final runner on the course, new to the World Cup from Sweden, Karin Abishasom. Karin, one of the newer contenders in the World Cup, out here with the veteran Ole Kulberg from Sweden. They're skiing well, I have to admit, I haven't seen this young lady ski on the World Cup before. Possibly looking to get a bit of experience. But very respectable skiing here from the young Swede, Karin. Very distinctive Swedish race suit with the yellow and blue. And Karin, our final runner of the ladies, safely into the skate section now. Unfortunately, she's not going to take the lead today, but still, no doubt she'll pick up some good World Cup points. Oh, just having a bit of a wobble there on the final turn. There we have it, going into 13th position for Sweden. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the ladies' first run, with Joanna Holtzman in first position from Germany, Amelie Raymond from Switzerland, followed by Martina Weiss, also from Switzerland. It was a very exciting first run. Great to see Joanna Holtzman taking the top spot after the first run. I think she's probably slightly surprised herself, given the strength of Amelie Remmel, such a strong performer. The screen now, Martina Weiss from Switzerland. Sorry. Second. Um, there we are, Amelie Remmel, the currently in second position behind Joanna Holtzman. Really powerful skier. And there it is, our current leader at the moment, Joanna Holtzman from Germany. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's a game of two runs, though, so these ladies will have a second run and they will go down in reverse order. So we'll see Joanna Holtzman come down the course last. So in just a few minutes' time, we'll be getting the men's run underway, the first of the men's runs, with Adrien Etivin from Mirabel in France, kicking things off. Nicolas Michel from Switzerland going down second. And Christik Lauvik-Gelsted from Norway going down third. Slightly further towards the, the back of the bib order, we have a couple of skiers I'd like to see taking a top spot here today. Of course, the local German Christoph Frank, very, very local from Germany, 
taking a 12th position, well, 13th in Prahlu just last week, 13th overall. Also, Corey Snyder, all the way over from the US of A, took 11th spot in Prahlu. There he is on your screen now. Of course, it is anyone's race here today. It's really blowing up the top now. The wind picking up a bit as the men warm up, getting ready to rock and roll. To them lock and bib number three on your screen. Trying to stay warm at the top. It's blowing today. It's only about zero degrees. It's not particularly cold, but with a wind chill factor, it's going to take the temperature down a bit. There we have it, our first runner from France. Adrien Etivin now on course, getting the men's race underway. Adrien trains alongside the great Phil Lau from France also in Meribel. Making nice work of his course so far. Very, very smooth skiing from the young Frenchman. Huge jump there, almost landing straight into the next blue gate. Apparently 15th overall in the sprint, just inside the top 15, but looking for a top spot here today. Be interesting to see which way round the men take in this top yellow gate. They have the option of going clockwise, anti-clockwise, and there we have it, the same way as the ladies' leader. Joanna Holtzman going anti-clockwise. Adrien Etivin making good work of this course. Picking up no penalties. A nice clean run from the Frenchman. Next up though, Nicolas Michel from Switzerland. Currently running in fourth overall in the sprint. A quick reminder in case you missed the last race in Pralu, it was a Swiss podium, Swiss 1 2 3. Bastian Dyer taking the win, Stefan Matter taking the second position, and Nicolas Michel here on your screen now in third spot. Will it be another Swiss podium today? I'm not too sure. Trim Locken back on form for Norway. Nicolas Michel, though, so smooth. So comfortable in these turns. Again, flying over the jump there. Absolute master technician here. Oh, Nicolas Michel flying into the netting on the 360, carrying a lot of speed. Let's hope he's OK. That was a big crash from the Swiss. We see him go around the 360 there, just getting caught in one of his skis, flying into netting. That's, of course, why we do have uh, the red safety netting in place. Let's hope he's OK back on his feet. Oh, spectacular crash. I have to say, I really didn't expect that from Nicolas Michel, certainly so early in this race. See some of the German team there looking on. The screen there, Christian Lalvik Gelsted from Norway, our third runner, just trying to stay warm during this court, short course interruption. We'll check Nicolas Michel's okay. Always a little bit unnerving in this situation. I remember racing some years ago out here in Obi actually, and I was uh, behind a short course hold as well, and it's not a nice experience. You don't know what's going on at the bottom. Also difficult to try and stay warm ahead of your start spot. One of the nice things about the course today is you can see almost the entirety of the course. You can see the top, you can see the finish. Good to see Nicolas Michel though back on his feet, not back on his boots. It's a very spectacular crash, indeed. See the coaches getting involved, trying to help out, trying to put the netting back in place so we get the race back underway.
It's the French coach there carrying off broken pole. Long into the Swissman, Nicolas Michel. You've seen the replay here. Just falling back onto the backs of his skis, getting catapulted into the netting. We saw quite a few crashes last week in Pralu and pa PLV, Pralongor Levanois. People sliding off into netting, speaking to the Russian coaches, saying there's a little bit of ice in there, catching people off the guard. Good to see Nicolas Michel there walking into the finish, back on his feet. Sadly, that'll put Nicolas Michel and for running in the second run. But good to see him back. Back on his feet. Well, in just a few moments' time, we'll see the Norwegian Christian Lalv Gelsted carrying on for Norway into his third season. There we have it, the replay once again. The Swissman Nicolas Michel catapulted into the red netting. Such a champo, back on his feet, smiling. Just behind the start, there we have it. Christian Alvik Gelsted, all the way from Morgedal in Norway, where Telemark was founded quite some time ago. Alvik Gelsted, one of the Norwegian Vikings out here, very tall, very strong, powerful skier. Very similar build to Sivit Hull also from Norway. Very long limbs, strong, powerful levers. You can see this guy take a top spot here today, going around the banana gate there. Making good work of this bottom section of the course. Safely around the 360. Christian Lalvigelsted from Norway. Plenty of encouragement from the Norwegian support team here in Obiok. Now the girl says, such a powerful skater. You see his arms go. There we have it, second position for Lalvik Gelsted from Norway. Very respectable first run. Still, of course, with Adria Etivan in the lead. Next up, though, bib number four, Louis Uber from Germany, the first of our German riders. Lovely skiing here from Uber. Really inclining, getting right in the side to turn. A slightly risky technique. Very, very easy to get caught in the inside ski. Big jump from Lewis Uber. Round the banana gate. Making beautiful work of this course. This man could be in contention here for the top spot. Plenty of support from German coach Fritz there on the sidelines. Going clockwise around that top yellow control gate. Slightly different tactic to Johanna Holtzman, who's currently leading the ladies' race. There we have it, Louis Uber going into the top spot there so far. Excellent first run from the German. Huge flight in the air. You can see Louis Uber taking the lead there for Germany. 
Of course, if anyone's going to take that lead away, Slim Locken, our next runner from Norway. Bib number five, as you can see on your screen now. This is the man to beat, currently third overall in the sprint. Slim Locken, an absolute master technician of the Telemark technique. Such a smooth skier, making it look so easy. A slightly slower start to the season, currently seventh. Sorry, third overall in the sprint. Came seventh in Pralu in the sprint. Probably a little bit further back than he was hoping. Great to see Tim Lokan taking a podium here today in Obiok. So far, making good work of this course, gliding beautifully around that top yellow control gate. Tim Lokan, there we have it, taking the lead. Almost a three second margin. Very, very respectable run from the Norwegian. We see him just break the end of his pole there <laughs> at some point during the skate. Next up, though, bib number six, Matti Lopez from Germany. Sorry, from France, correction. Matti Lopez, also from Maribel, training alongside Adria Etivan and Phil Lau. Really strong, powerful skier, Matti Lopez. Took his first podium in Rukan 2015 in the Classic. No doubt looking for a, another podium here today. Lopez took the 10th spot in Pralu. Looks like a big flight there from Matty. Interesting to see lots of the men going clockwise around this top control gate. Of course, the real aim is to try and carry as much ski speed and glide through this yellow section of the skate. There we have it, second spot for Matty Lopez. Excellent run, putting him just behind Tim Locken from Norway. Huge jump from Matty. Next up, though, Jul Alish from Slovenia. Another real contender here today. Currently sixth overall in the sprint standings, sixth in the Pralu sprint just over a week ago. Jul Alish making good work of this course so far. Jul took his first set of gold medals last year. Oh, huge jump there from Jura I was about to say he took his first gold medals in all three Telemark disciplines last season. Really risen to fame on the World Cup circuit. Having a crack in ski. I think he could be on for a fast run here. The question is, has he got the speed to take the lead over Trim Locken from Norway? Trim on your screen, carefully watching the monitor now. And I think Yuda might just have it here. It's going to be very close. Ski into second position for Yuda Alish just behind Trim Locken. Very respectable first run, though. Lovely skiing. Right on his edges there. Next up, though, bib number eight from France, from Samoa in France, Noé Clay. Noé took a top 10 position in Pralu just over a week ago. 
coming in ninth. Starting bib number eight today, can he get a top five spot? Noé Clay from France. Huge amount of energy popping out of these turns. Beautiful skiing from a Frenchman. Interesting to see a lot of these top men absolutely smashing the men's jump line. I suspect for the second round, the coaches or the course setter even will probably move the jump line down a little bit, making it a little bit more difficult. Noe Clay, though, has the clay today. Certainly in the skating section here, giving it everything. Possibly a little bit off the time, picking up three jump penalties, unfortunately, not quite making the line. Always difficult to see from the camera's angle. There we have it, seventh position for Noe Clay. A real shame as he skied so well in that top section of the course, arcing his skis beautifully. Next up, though, the legend, the veteran, Phil Lau from France. Now in the gate. Phil Lau, over 210 World Cup starts, over 110 World Cup podiums. This man's going to take the lead. It's going to be Phil Lau. Phil Lau currently second overall in the sprint standings took a fourth place in Pralu just off the podium last week. Huge flight from Phil Lauer. Real master of the Telemark World Cup. Been racing for some years now, well, since 2005, so plenty of experience in the French camp. Phil tends to favour the shorter sprint and parallel sprint courses. Absolutely storming this course today. Not quite sure he's going to take the lead. Oh, Phil Lau skiing to first spot. Huge run from the Frenchman. Just pipping to the Mlocken there. Seriously impressive skiing from Phil Lau. Next up, bib number 10 now on your screen, Sivit Hull from Norway. Sivit joined the World Cup back in 2011. Looks like he's already snapped the end of his pole though, certainly taken basket of his pole. Oh, just getting caught up in the gate. It looks like he got his hand caught on the inside. Just swing him around. That's one of the issues of taking such a direct line in some of these gates, it's very, very easy to get caught up. There we have it, Simit Hull discarding his broken pole. Well into the 360 now. Hopefully his coach will be on hand. There we have it, perfection there, but handing off a second pole. Simit Hull for Norway. Ladies and gentlemen, that really was perfection. You saw the coach there ready with another pole, and Stuart Hull could be on for a good time here, considering the mistakes he had, the errors at the top of the course. Stuart Hull from Norway, skiing into ninth position. Clearly frustrated, some mistakes. There we have it, just breaking his pole, coming out the start gate, how frustrating for the Norwegian. There we have it, getting caught up, coming into the rough snow there. Very, very easy to break a skate pole here. Most of the racers use pure carbon poles. But next up, Stefan Matta from Switzerland. Stefan took the silver medal in the last race in Praluf, Switzerland, making up the all Swiss podium. Bastian first, Nicolas Michel in third. Stefan, though, absolute master 
of the Telemark racing technique. Skis so beautiful. His skis just rail through the snow. Nice jump from Stefan. Probably looking slightly tentative in the air. Matter crossing over from Alpine Racing took his first podium in Hintertux in 2015. And he started racing the year before. And a real force to be reckoned with on the Telemark World Cup. Stefan Matter making good work of his course. Has he got enough in the tank? Fortunately not. You see him just picking up three penalties for not making the jump line. Still sick position. Very, very respectable for Stefan Matter. There we have it. Just slightly short on the line there. I would imagine lots of the earlier racers possibly jumping on the team radios saying, don't jump so hard. Because as we saw, a lot of the men and the women overshooting their lines, but obviously had to give it something. There we have our leader, Phil Lau. Next up though, Bastian Dyer from Switzerland. The winner in Pralu, the overall World Cup leader wearing that blue bib. Again, another veteran in the World Cup circuit. Over 205 World Cup starts, 67 podiums to his name. No doubt being watched, cheered on by his daughter Anna and partner Marina, who will be the TD at the next race in Kvavit, Slovenia. Bastian absolutely flying down this course now. A slight speed check going into 360. Bastian's a fantastic skater. Very, very strong. Well-versed skier. Interesting tactic there, going anti-clockwise around the top yellow control gate. Picking up a one-second penalty in the jump. Skiing into fourth position for Bastian Dyer. Shaking his head. Very respectable run, though. Again... Wonderful arcing of the skis higher up in the course. Next up, bib number 13, Armin Mostahagen from Norway. Another tall, strong Norwegian Viking, also known as the monster here in the World Cup circuit, or monster to some people anyway. Mostahagen making good work in the top section of this course. As he approaches the jump. Huge jump there from Mostahagen, smashing the men's jump line there. Can he do some damage? Safely into 360. Pushing hard. Carrying plenty of speed into the skating section here. He really is moving, coming into the final straight here. Mosterhagen going into eighth position for Norway. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, it is a game of two runs, so the top 30 men will be flipped for the second run. So the 30th racer will go down first, and the fastest racer, 30th. Ole Kullberg, though, from Sweden, our only male Swedish competitor now on course. New race suit for this year, the yellow and blue. Easy to spot on the course. This is Ole's first Telemark World Cup the season. Taking a bit of time out, just started studying medicine in Gothenburg, Sweden. Huge jump though. Smashing his way through the yellow banana gate. Ole Kullberg. Another veteran on the World Cup circuit. 
I haven't seen him take a podium in recent years. It'd be good to see Kohlberg take a, it's only a top 10 spot here in Obi York. Having said that, without the training, as much training as some of his fellow competitors, eight position, very, very respectable. A mere four seconds off the mark for Kohlberg. Of course, so important to be within the top 30 here today. The course really was deteriorating yesterday on the training day. It's a very, very odd snow cover here. It's, it's all natural, but it's uh, very, very soft on top, quite hard underneath. So lots of these top skiers will be scraping that top, that slightly softer snow away. Next on course, though, from France, bib number 15, Elie Nabo. Nabo, the nephew of the great French racer, Laura grenier Solige, who retired some years ago now. Took two Junior World Championships, silver medals in Murin last season. Yet to take a World Cup podium. Huge jump from Ellie Nabo. Never shy, take a little bit of air on the jumps. Oh, just getting caught up there. Falling inside the turn, a great recovery though. I thought he was gonna go over. Ellie Nabo from France safely into skating section. Very similar to Phil Lau, such quick reactions, making recoveries, such recoveries possible. Ellie Nabo just a little way off the mark there, skiing into 12th position. All things considered, not a bad time considering his mistake just there falling inside putting his hand down almost missing the red gate before the 360. Phil Lau our current overall leader giving a bit of a wave from the winner's enclosure. Well there we have it our top 15 with Phil Lau leading over Tim Locken. Unfortunate race from Sivid Hull, breaking his pole coming out of the start. Next up, though, bib number 16, Henrik Buchbrein from Norway. As I understand it, this is Henrik's first World Cup of this season. Very successful junior racer. Had a lot of success in Murin last year. Now looking to mix things up with the seniors. Big jump from a Norwegian. It's great to see so many racers today not shying away from a jump. Too often the racers will make a conscious decision not to jump and preserve a little bit of speed rather than maybe shooting a jump. Henrik Buchbrein from Norway put in a fine performance here. Don't think he's going to beat our current leader, Phil Lau, taking the top spot. But a respectable run from the Norwegian, all the same. There we have it, skiing into 12th position. So far, the screen now, Jonas from Germany looking over the races. But now, bib number 17, also from Germany, Thomas Olovius. Olovius, one of the more mature racers, 29 years of age, one of the senior racers on the German team. Currently 29th overall in the sprint standings. Olovius joined the World Cup in 2015, so he's got he's only got a few seasons under his belt. No doubt looking for some World Cup points and going into 15th position for Thomas Olovius.
Next up, the Swissman, Gato Procura. Huge flight there from Gato. Amazing camera angle, seeing these guys flying through the air. Gato, another promising Swiss racer. Looking to take a good position for the second run, no doubt, and a few World Cup points after today. There we see his time. Clean run, no penalties, but six seconds off the mark. Sadly, that won't put him in the lead today. Next up, though, pip number 19, Chris Frank. A local skier to here in Obiok. I'd like to see this guy take a top 10 today. He's certainly been knocking on the door. Took 13th position in Pralu just last week. 12th overall in the standings in the sprint. Chris Frank for Germany into his second season racing World Cup. Plenty of local support. There we have it. 14 for Christoph Frank. Another German on course now. Leonard Müller, another local to Obi York. Let's see where Leonard can do equally well as Christoph Frank. Muller carrying plenty of speed into 360 there. Certainly not taking any speed checks going in. Started racing four years ago, similar to some of the other Norwegians who are, well, Thomas Olovia certainly, another German racer who's been racing for a few years now. Going to 19th position for Leonard Muller. Possibly slightly disappointed he wasn't a little bit further up. But next up, Corey Snyder from US of A, bib number 21. Another wild card, I'd say, for today's race. Took 11th spot in the last sprint. Currently studying for his PhD in Austria. Spending. Oh, Corey Snyder getting very, very close to the netting. First part of a 360 there. You can say currently studying in Austria, spending the whole winter in Europe racing World Cup. Corey Snyder, another veteran of the World Cup. Started racing in 2010. Had a number of top 10 World Cup finishes since 2012. And there we have it, 11th spot so far for Corey Snyder. And a good run too. Next up though, bib number 22 from Norway, Jukup Avenberg. Just 19 years of age. Another young Norwegian looking to get the more experience under the belt. Possibly a few more World Cup points. Yeah, up having a great skate here. Really powerful, like his fellow Norwegians. Spend a little time on the skate track, Nordic track, perfecting that skate technique and 21 position for the Norwegian. Next up though, Benny Huntsman from Germany, another local. Benny Holtzman took his first podium in 2012, a real veteran on the circuit. Very successful junior world championship skier as well. If anyone's going to come through from a bag, it's going to be Benny Holtzman. Fantastically able skier. Very, very powerful skater as well. Benny Holtzman. 
pushing hard for the line. Surely a top 10 position for the German. What's he going to do today? There we have it, third for Benny Holtzman. Huge run from the German. Seriously impressive skiing from 23rd into a provisional third place so far. Next up, Eva Hexberg from Norway. 19 years of age. Making good work of this course. Hexenberg, another newcomer to the World Cup, just his second season racing on the senior circuit. Safely now into the skating section. Slightly off the mark, didn't make the jump line, picking up three penalties. Nice clean run though, not too many penalties in the gate. Skiing into 21st position, 21st position even for Eva Hexenberg. Now on course from Great Britain, Alec Dixon. Alec Dixon, one of the famous Dixon brothers, racing alongside Colin Dixon, who I understand will be racing tomorrow as well for Great Britain. Alec wearing a very distinctive yellow helmet, black gray suit, just putting the brakes on there, going into the 360. Alec, a, a fun guy to be around, an interesting musician as well. He is um, currently training, or well, not training, practicing the triangle, which is his instrument of choice. At university, Alec Dixon now pushing for the line for Great Britain, going into 24th position. Now on course from Switzerland, bib number 26, Maxim Mosset. Maxim joined the World Cup 2015, slightly shy of a jump there, possibly not quite making the jump line. Currently 17th in the overall sprint standings. Not carrying quite as much speed out of the 360 as perhaps he might have liked. We see the bottom of the course now just getting slightly churned up. It is really quite warm at the bottom of the course there, around zero degrees. So these guys are going to have to be pushing hard. Oh, just falling, almost falling inside the turn a couple of times there. Skiing into 24th position so far for Maxim Mossat from Switzerland. Now, of course, though, from Germany, Robin Kraft, probably one of the craftiest skiers here in the World Cup. A little bit shy in the jump there. Carrying plenty of speed into the lower section of the course, though. It's great to see the German supporters out here in Obiok. No shortage. People cheering. The young German on, Robin Kraft. Robin Kraft from Germany going hard for the line. Skiing into 26th position, unfortunately picking up a four second penalty on the jump. Next up though from Great Britain, bib number 28, Ben Emsley. Sponsored by Burt's Pizzas. Those of you who are not aware, Burt's Pizzas are a northern pizza company. Highly recommended. Big jump from Ben. Certainly fearless when it comes to taking a little bit of flight. A uh, girl there smiling, looking at Ben. Obviously an admirer. Not so vocal in her support. But uh, Ben Emsley from Great Britain. Looking for a top 30 finish after the first run. Certainly putting him in the flip for the second run. Nice clean run, zero penalty points. 24 for Ben Emsley. Very respectable first run.
next in the start game, yeah, next on course, I should say. Bib number 29, Andre Hega from the Czech Republic. Come back to skiing, had a knee operation in, yeah, uh, well, at the end of last year. Form of his meniscus, but now back on course. Andre Hega, a real veteran of the World Cup. I remember racing Andre back in what would have been 2012 at the World Champs in Norway. An excellent GS skier. Andre Hega, there we go. Skiing to 25th for the Czech Republic. Not a bad run considering possibly not as much training as some of the other races out here today. Now on course, Antoine Boulanger Muron from Canada, our only Canadian racer. Antoine, a real character in the World Cup. Didn't do any of the earlier races in the World Cup, so this will be his first race, World Cup race of this season. Making good work of this course. Antoine, the French-speaking Canadian, currently training with the British team in Les Uches. 23rd position, not bad at all, skiing from bib number 30. Impressive skiing from a Canadian. Next up, though, bib number 31, Maximilian Uber from Germany. He's taking a huge flight there. Hopefully he made the jump line. Maximilian Uber, another well-versed ski racer. Racing alongside Louis Uber. Maximilian has been racing since 2014, so certainly got a bit more experience under his belt. Again, looking for a top 30 finish after the first run to put him in the flip for the second. What can Uber do today? And an uber fast skate going into the finish, putting him in a provisional 30th position. Just going over the jump there from Germany, Max Suter having a few issues, getting it back in line now. Wearing the wonderfully distinctive black and white German race suit from a few years back. Great to see so many young Germans out here racing today in Obiok. It's great to have so many locals as well. So many of the German team live and train in the valley. So lots of support. Max Suter over the line in 24th position so far. Not bad at all. Now on screen, though, our only Italian competitor, Rafael Matlic, a real character on the circuit, a big fan of your pizza pasta. Had a lot of fun in Italy at the start of the season in the Tuile. Over here with his dad and coach. Rafael's really a, a shining Italian competitor at the moment, doing so well in the World Cup. Always has a big grin on his face. Good fun to be around. Rafael, currently 22nd in the overall sprint standings. Great to see this guy take a top 20 spot today, if not top 15. But it's going to be tough. The field of 38 men racing today. You're going to be very unlucky if you're outside the flip. Rafael Ski in the 21st. Great run from the Italian. Of course, if any of these racers towards the back of the field can beat their number, huge bonus. Next up, though, bib number 34 from Switzerland, Valentin Rudert. 
Valentin been racing for a number of years now in the World Cup. Hasn't taken a podium yet. A little bit shy on the jump, possibly not quite taking as much speed as he would have liked. Safety around the 360 though. Into the skate section, see the coach Rudy in the corner of your screen. Giving plenty of support for the Swiss. Valentin Rodot just losing his pole there as he's skating. Going into 30th position. Oh, bit of a mistake there from Julian Zerbert from Germany, bib number 35. Bit of a legend in the World Cup. Currently going out with Illoué Ravenel, the young French skier. Unfortunately isn't here at the moment. Julian Zerbert from Switzerland. No, he's done a lot of training in Lazouche with the French team and the British team. Certainly looking to better his bid position today. Julian Zerbert from Switzerland, a consistent skier. Currently 19th equal in the sprint standings. Be great to see this guy take a top 20 today. 25 after the first run. Not bad. He's got a place in the flip, and that's the important thing going into the second run. Being in the top 30, being able to get into having a good start position. Next up, though, from Great Britain, Louis Hatchwell, bib number 36. Louis from the Primrose Hill Ski Club in North London. Had a, a lot of issues at the start of the season with equipment and his body as well, which is... Uh, made a good recovery from now. I know he had issues with his hand after the last World Cups in France. Louis Hatchwell, currently 22nd overall in the sprint. Fantastically powerful athlete. Spends a lot of time in the gym working on those bicep curls for the girls. And it looks like they're paying off for Louis Hatchwell. Three penalties on the jump. And 31st position for Louis Hatchwell, unfortunately, just outside the top 30. That's going to hurt going into the second run. Next on course, though, Nikolai Sayev from Russia, our only Russian competitor out here in Obiok. Nikolai has done a huge amount of work promoting telemark skiing in Russia. He's coached there looking on at his performance. Nikolai also a ski instructor in Switzerland outside the World Cup. Very, very technical telemark skier on the race slope and also in the back country. Nikolai Sayev for Russia, going up, taking the top control gate clockwise, as did many of the men. There we have it, crossing the line, 36th position for the Russian. And now onto our final run on the course, Jonas Schmidt. We should see any second now. There we have it, our last runner in the gate. A bit of a veteran on the circuit. Jonas has been racing for some years now. If anyone's going to take a top 10 spot here, certainly coming from the back, it's going to be Jonas. Starting right at the back of the field, he's taking a bit of time out of racing. So unfortunately, he hasn't got the World Cup points or Fizz points, which some of the other racers have. I'd love to see Jonas take a podium here. Oh, just getting a bit carried away on the jump, taking a huge amount of speed going to those next gates, smashing the banana gates out the way. Nice clean run from Jonas, though. No penalty points on the clock so far. Cruising 
around these yellow control gates. Really tough job for Jonas Schmidt, coming right at the back of the field. We were far from perfect course conditions. Jonas Schmidt from Germany, our final runner in the men. Taking the first position, I cannot believe my eyes. Jonas Schmidt from Germany coming in from 38 position, skiing into the top spot. I cannot believe that. That is a remarkable run from Jonas Schmidt. <laughs> what a performance from a Swissman. I really not wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting that. Huge run. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, phenomenal finish to the first run in the men's. Jonas Schmidt just clinching the top spot ahead of Phil Lauder. I don't think I've ever seen a skier come in, take the lead position, skiing from the back of a field. Such a strong run. Jonas Schmidt, big grin on his face. What a performance from the German. Incredible skiing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the first run. We'll be taking a bit of a break here, but we'll be back on at 12.30 Central European time. There we have the results. Jonas Schmidt followed by Phil Lau and Tim Locken. Really tight top three. What an incredible run from Jonas Schmidt. I can't quite believe what just happened there. Incredible skiing. As I mentioned, we'll be back at 12.30 after a course reset, and we'll be getting underway with the ladies, followed by the men once again. Join us again at 12.30. I'll be speaking to you back then. That's all for now. Alles klar, dann schauen wir jetzt mal, dass wir Jonas vielleicht noch ganz kurz kann, ganz kurz noch für, für zwei Fragen schnell, oder? Das ist ja super, alles klar. Und Mensch, auf jeden Fall schnell umhauen. Mensch, Jonas, letztes Jahr Kommentator, heute den ersten Lauf gerockt. Ähm, ja, wie war es? Servus, also ich muss sagen, Mensch, ist ja als Kommentator, das war auch schön. Das hat mir Spaß gemacht, aber jetzt macht es doch ein bisschen mehr Spaß, wenn ich bin. Wie war der Lauf? Wie ist eigentlich meine Strecke?